on the order list this morning. Hey everybody, I'm at the uh, Pleasant Prairie Mini Makers Fair in front of an, an awesome B9 replica, the robot from Lost in Space. To find out more, I caught up with Gordon Smith, amateur roboticist and creator of the B9 replica. I awesome. am a robot from Lost in Space. Welcome to Spark Robots Review. So Gordon, tell us um, about uh, yourself and this amazing replica here. Um, well, Lost in Space came on when I was 10 years old, so I thought about nothing else ever since then. I tried to build it several times, and, um, and then I found the B9 Builders Club. They have accurate parts, a lot of them cast from the original, and uh, they do screen grabs, make sure we get the right number of ribs in the collar, and, and uh, then the Makerspace also helped me. How do you make sure that it is as accurate as it can be. Do you guys work together? Do you collaborate in the club, or how does that work? Yeah, some people got to see the original, and they went and took measurements off the original. Um, they had access to the original mold, and they made copies from the original mold. And the rest of the time, they do screen grabs and count how many ribs are in the collar. And, and uh, go, oh yeah, there's supposed to be a little thing here, and there's supposed to be a latch here. Was when he pulled his arms in, he would latch him in here. Oh, he's totally impressive. So, uh, how much does he weigh? Um, approximately 300 pounds. It includes uh, wheelchair motors and batteries in the base. And then uh, he's mostly aluminum fiberglass. Let's get technical. So, how, what is he running on? Most of the motors are running from a relay board controlled by a parallax basic stamp. And the uh, radar up here is controlled with an Arduino. And uh, all the, the blinking lights are just a uh, sequencer chip. And uh, yeah, it, eventually most of them will be Arduino. And there will be remote control for the feet so he doesn't get out of control. And uh, you know, he gets an upgrade every year. Uh, this year it was a clause. I got plans for those to put some pager motors in there. And the sound effects sound authentic. Yeah. This is the original voice of, of uh, Dick Tuffield. The only danger that my sensors indicate is that you forgot to utilize your deodorant this morning. Turbo, I guess so. you should not use your entire vocabulary in a single sentence. I suggest you seek professional help. And the background noise that the robot always made, you can hear it sounds like the, those fish instruments, you know, the, the notches in the stick. It's kind of what it sounds like, is background motor noises. How long did it take to build? It's more than 10 years. I kind of lost track. About, about 10 years and $5,000, um, that's about $10 a week. So what's next for the robot? Uh, make it him walk. I got linear slides at ankle level, so the feet can actually move a little bit. It's only a five inch step, but it'll be the illusion of walking. Are you working on any other robots? Yeah, the female robot from Lost in Space. She, she was evil and then then he had to destroy her and then reconstitute her and made her good. She tried to lead him astray too. He, he almost went that way. So how far are you in, in that project? Um, most it's just a shell, an empty shell. Um, yeah, it's, it hasn't gotten very far in control finding some blue bellows. Uh, a little bit smaller than these. So I found three inch shock absorbers. They're not quite right for it. Boy, he's truly remarkable. You're truly a, a true craftsman here. Nice meeting you and good luck in the show. Appreciate it.